I want to talk to you how to learn to live sinfully. How to learn to live sinfully. We are in our retreat this day with these two words. Sense and life. Sense and life. How do you say sense in Korea? Kamsa. How do you say life in Korea? Sun. So how do you say that we are here to live sinfully in Hangumar? Live sinfully. And through this Sam, I want to teach you five R's to how to live sinfully. It's interesting that maybe you were here about this story, the Mayflower, that many people they celebrating and they suffer and they die. But you were thinking about that in the Mayflower they also teenagers like you. Do you recognize that? Or do you hear that? Actually, I think a survey that I found that there are many names of the teenagers who were in the Mayflower during that uh, trip from Europe to America. First name, Mary Clinton, that she was uh, 13 years old. Uh, it's a legend that she uh, was the first female who arrived at Plymouth. And there were uh, another name, uh, Constance Hopkins. She was also 13 years old. And she, uh, her younger brother, Oxianus was born while Mayflower was at, at the sea. And probably he spent a lot of time taking care of her mother's name. And the other uh, person was uh, Guys Hopkins. She was around 11 and 12 years old, also a brother of Contents. And Elizabeth Tidley, uh, 13 years old. Then Francis Bilton, 14 years old. John Mill Billington, 16 years old. Disa Desire Minter, 15 to, or 17 years old, and uh, Priscilla Mullins, 15 and 17 years old, and uh, a boy named uh, William Button, that his uh, age was not recorded, but in one of the IRS they said he was a, a young servant of Samuel Fuller, he was a doctor. So these teenagers were in the, in the main flower, and imagine that situation that when everything was a mess, when there were no food, there were people dying, they didn't have toilets in this uh, Mayflower, and they arrived to America, and in all these circumstances, they continue with their families together, trying to give the reason of their faith and the reason to immigrate to America. Um, it's, it, it's hard to sometimes Think about that the teenagers of those days were different than the teenagers of these days. We make uh, tests about personality yesterday, and we find many personalities in, in, the, in this uh, school. So imagine that all these representative of this personality were in the main flower, and they were all teenagers like you. So how would be the environment, how would be the circumstances inside the main flower during this days that they were just looking for land. So I think that it wasn't different like today. Because we, lighthouse is like this Mayflower. This lighthouse is like this journey that we are going from this world to heaven. From this life to the promised one. So we are like in, in this Mayflower, do, giving this journey and now your teachers, your pastors, are like these parents, these adults who were in the Mayflowers, among these teenagers who were inside in this journey to go to a place that they can worship God freely. Um, I want to teach you because of time, I cannot explain you and, and go deeply in this in story, but I want to go to the topic of today to learn how to live sinfully. So it's time to give sense because we are celebrating sense giving. But sense giving is an attitude of everyday life. Sense giving is, an, is a style of life. Yeah. Every day we have to give sense and we have to live a life thankfully every day just for the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. We sing yesterday that song, right? 
Yeah, and you remember you were in line nine, all the nine singing together here. <laughs> so first one, the first R, I want you to take notes because I want you to remember the, the rest of your life. Sense giving is a time for relationship. Sense giving is a time for relationship. The first R is relationship. How do you say relationship in Hangman? Hange. So the verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pastor. What is this relationship here? God is the shepherd of your soul. He is the shepherd of your life. And you have this relationship. And because you have this relationship, you have a reason to give sense. How we got this point to have this relationship with God? Who made this relationship with God between He and us? The verse 4 said, Enter His gate with thanksgiving and His courts with praise and give thanks to Him and praise His name. In the name of Jesus, this relationship was made. Because there is no salvation, there is no other name in, in, in heaven and earth that we can be saved. We can have this relationship. And this relationship made us possible to enter in His gates and His course with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a time for rejoicing. Verse 1 and 2 say, Shout for the joy to the Lord all the years. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. And verse 4 says, Enter His gate again with thanksgiving and His core with praise. And give sense to him and praise his name. Sense giving is a time for responding. It's a volunteer, it's a willing, it's a desire from the heart to do something for something that you already realize. Moses gave to the people of Israel instruction, teaching how to give sense to the Lord. And there were the law and regulations about. The offerings, sense giving offering. If you go with me in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 7, verse 11 to 14, Moses gives this revelation about the fellowship offering that is also the same, the sense giving offering. These are the regulations for the fellowship offerings a, respond, a person may present to the Lord if he offers it as an expression of sensefulness. Expression of Sinfulness. Then, along with this sent offering, repeat, sent offering, he is to offer cakes of bread made without yeast and mixed with all wafers. Oh, somebody's hungry this morning. Wafers made without yeast and cakes of fine flour, well kneaded, with mixed with oil. Along with this fellowship offering of sense giving. He is to present an offering with cakes of bread made with yes. Oh, I didn't have bread this morning. He is to bring one of each kind of an offering, a contribution to the Lord. It belongs to the priest who sprinkles the blood of the fellowship offering. Hmm. Now, listen. When the People of Israel, they have to bring the sense king giving offerings. What is it required? Cakes, waffler, bread. Yes. So they have this sense giving celebration with cakes and, and waffler. Wow. I would like to eat donuts instead. But imagine everybody brings cake instead of fruit. Everybody brings wafflers. And then what the priests will do? With these cakes and wafflers. Do you know what he's going to do? Because the priest will sprinkle the blood of the fellowship offering. Blood? Pee? On the bread? Yes. <coughs> the priest going to use this bread here, all the donuts, all the wafflers there, and then there were the blood, and then. Now, let's eat the bread. Why did 
This bread doesn't belong to the people. Belong to the priest. Why? Because the priest is going to sprinkle the blood of sacrifice. What sacrifice is that? And what is related with the sense given response? The response is that the people were calling to give sense to God. And they bring the bread of God. And then the, 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 the priest, they put the blood in the bread. And now this is a sense giving offering, the sense giving fellowship offering. What does it mean? People didn't did understand what does it mean? Why God give us this law? Wait. Jesus is the bread of life. And his blood was sprinkling for you and for me to be saved. Part of this is his body. And this is his blood that he gave for all of us. What is your response for this fact? What is it your response for this truth? What are you reflecting this morning? What are you remember this morning? What are you rejoicing this morning? What relationship you have this morning? What are you doing here this morning? I know one thing that is true. Even though I die tonight, I can enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise and song because Jesus Blood and body was shared for me. For me. I don't know about you, but I know this is for me. I don't know about you, but I know this is for me. I'm assured that I will go to heaven. You have to realize that this message is not for me. It's for you. You have to realize that this is your last chance. Maybe. I don't know what is your future. But I can assure you, if you, you understand what the blood of Jesus means, and what the body of Jesus was on the cross means then you can go to heaven and give sense to God in His holy presence. For three, Lord, don't let us forget what we have learned here. We are here to learn how to live sinfully, how to live a life of gratitude. The gratitude of our, the relationship that you made, you made for us. You came from heaven to earth to die for us and open this relationship. Lord, let us remember all the time, every day, that we live for you and we die for you. And whatever, whatever we do, we do for your glory. Let us reflect, Lord, every day that we are blessed people. Even though we don't have fruits in our life, but we will rejoice, Lord, in your presence. Let us rejoice every day with songs of praises and sadness given, Lord. And let us respond, Lord, to your sacrifice. Let us respond, Lord, for what this willing sacrifice you made for all of us. Because you died for us. We are sinners and you died for us. We don't deserve to be in heaven, Lord, but you made it possible, Lord. People cannot understand this, Lord, that you made it possible. I cannot understand this, how a person like me can enter in heaven. But you made it possible. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you.